and welcome Whit Ayers. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a, a great day yesterday. I know I learned a lot. We had some fascinating panels and some fascinating speakers, I thought, during the course of the day yesterday. Hope you had a great evening last night and enjoyed some of the, the great restaurants around this part of Washington. Uh, welcome back for our second and final day of the 20th annual AAPC conference. We're going to start it off with a blockbuster panel sponsored by TVB. TVB has been a sponsor for uh, a couple of years now and has been a major supporter of AAPC. Uh, we have a number of folks from TVB here. Uh, Abby, Abby Arbach, where are you? Hey, there's Abby over there. Um, Steve Lanzano, S Scott Roskowski, Ron Salmon, and our moderator for today's panel who will introduce our panelists. Please welcome back to the AAPC stage, Jack Poor. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, it's our treat uh, to host the, uh, the, the breakfast meeting, uh, all, all panel meeting, uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, we really enjoy uh, working with you people. And on behalf of all our member television stations, I, I'd like to, uh, to thank you as an industry for uh, once again uh, providing us with a blockbuster year last year uh, with political spending. Our television stations uh, wrote over $1.8 billion in campaign spend and another uh, $300 million in, in ballot and issue spending. So it's an enormous amount of money. Uh, your support is deeply, deeply appreciated. And we're trying to work as hard as we can uh, to earn your support on an ongoing basis. So once again, thank you. Uh, we've got a great panel today, and I'm going to bring them up and introduce them. But before I do, I want to tell you the, what the goal of this session is. Uh, you know, you hear an awful lot about it's going to be the year of this or the year of that or what just happened. It's going to be the year of social. It's going to be the year of mobile. It's going to be the year of video. It's going to be the year of user-generated content. It's going to be the year of Citizens United. It's going to be the year of a thousand races. Uh, maybe it was all of them, or maybe it was none. Our panel is, is going to try to uh, inform us on, on what really happened and what we think is really going to happen going forward. So in order of appearance, I'd like to bring up first uh, Lorena Chambers. Lorena is the CEO and co-founder. By the way, all of our panelists, except for myself, are founders or co-founders. Uh, Lorena is, is uh, CEO and co-founder of Chambers Lopez Gaitan. This is a niche communications company in, in Washington, DC. They were the only third party ad campaign provider that targeted Hispanic voters uh, in the Obama campaign. And uh, Lorena has won many, many awards working with candidates, the DNC, the DCCC, and she's also been very active in uh, issue advertising, all to the Hispanic community, and uh, in, with a particular emphasis this year, I guess, and last year on healthcare. So, Lorena, thank you, thank you for joining us. Uh, next is uh, somebody who probably needs no introduction here, Fred Davis. Fred is the... <laughs> Fred is the Oklahoma Californian uh, that runs Strategic Perception, Inc., a top Republican strategist. Uh, Fred staged the Republican convention in 2008 and was McCain's chief media strategist. Uh, he had a slew of Republican wins in 2010, but is probably best known for the demon sheep and the art of going viral. So Fred, thank you for coming in and joining us. Our third panelist today, uh, Kyle Roberts. <laughs> Kyle is, uh, is a co-founder, no, actually a founder of uh, the Smart Media Group, leading Republican media planning and buying agency in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, worked on the McCain campaign with Fred, and is reputed to be the 
fastest growing political media shop in town. Uh, so, so says Kyle. Kyle, <laughs> thank, you, thank you for joining us. It's a treat to have you here. Uh, we were supposed to be joined by David Heller of Main Street Communications, uh, who is a Democratic, uh, one of the leading Democratic uh, political strategists. Unfortunately, due to personal uh, uh, circumstances, David was unable to join us. Uh, we'll miss him, but, uh, but we've got a terrific uh, a group uh, to carry on. So uh, let me just get things started. By, by saying, uh, as far as the intro, it was the year of this, it was the year of that, it was the year of, of uh, what was it the year of? What, what, Lorena, what was your biggest takeaway on what the biggest new thing from a media point of view was that happened uh, in the 2010 cycle? Uh, the biggest thing for me was uh, we kept the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was a fantastic uh, win to keep uh, Senator Reid. Um, but more importantly, I think it was knowing the change in demographics that are happening among politics and across the country. And I think that the makeup of the parties are changing and it's really important to understand how those changes are gonna affect future voting. Okay. Kyle, what did, what did you see different last year? Uh, from a media perspective, I think there were lots of things. Um, I feel like we were much better at integrating among all the mediums broadcast, cable, radio, and internet. Integrating much better across all the platforms and then using each platform, not only for all of its targeting um, uh, advantages, but also for its messaging advantages. I really felt like we as a company, also as an industry, you saw this too. You saw campaigns and consultants understanding much better the power of each medium and how to use messaging to target within each medium. I'll go into some examples later, but I really thought that that was a, a, a huge trend. I certainly think that viral campaigning was a big deal. I think in 2008, that trend had started, and I do feel in 2010 that trend continued. Thanks. Fred? Well, it's not really on the media side, but <coughs> I, I thought the biggest shock of the year, and we'd predicted it, but not that it would happen this quickly, is the old pendulum swung mighty fast. You know, everybody from Karl Rove on thought the Republicans would rule the world for the rest of the world. And all of a sudden, Barack Obama came in and the pendulum swung back. And normally, the pendulum takes a nice big arc. And that Barack pendulum, bam, it hit a wall. And it didn't swing up very high. And it came back really fast. And Lorena, I think you would be, you would probably agree you got a little lucky on Harry Reid and that, that that race, the whole cycle was a little tighter than you had won. I thought that was the one major. You all put her on the ticket. <laughs> let me, I, let me, let me, let me uh, ask a little inside baseball question here because it's something that I've always I've had a hard time getting my hands around. And that's how early on does the, in a campaign does the media strategy get formulated and when you're working on the media strategy, uh, what are the different roles of the campaign manager, the media strategist, and, and, the, and the media buying entity? Because for a lot of sellers in the room, they don't know where to go or, or how the thing fits together. Or when. And <coughs> Fred, could you start out on sure. that one? I, I think it varies, Jack, from campaign to campaign. The great ones, Whit and I work with a guy that does things enormously early. And it's the best, they, those are the best run campaigns that I'm ever involved in. Two years in advance, you very calmly have a meeting with all the consultants. You discuss the, the whole parameters of the race. And out of that meeting, which is usually a day and a half long, you come up with a campaign plan that's almost identical to the campaign that ends up getting run. It's pretty amazing. In that process, the media buyer is there. That's one of the key people in that race. Now, I mean, in that planning session. We'll go back and everybody will do the detail work, but if it's Kyle, that he will know leaving that meeting how much money he has. He may not know how much is gonna go to broadcast, cable, internet, whatever, but he'll know the overall amount. So that's two years in advance. You should be calling Kyle and, and his, <laughs> his small competitors. Um, some campaigns are that. Daily too. That's right, yeah. That's, that's the best case. 
a lot of campaigns, um, and then the presidentials are like that in general as well. The s smaller races, kind of the farther you go down, the longer they wait. And I always think they wait because they think it's going to save them money, which is exactly wrong. At least in our shop, it doesn't save you a dollar. You just have to make bigger payments <laughs> later. <laughs> So why not have the advantage of two years of thought and thinking about it? So you can be anywhere from two years out to, in my case, two years out to maybe a month or two out in some really pathetic cases. And, and so, you know, widen your horizons because some races that I'm working with on Kyle right now, he already knows the budgets are hitting. <laughs> interesting is that the it is about being early and going in in our shop we actually do the planning media planning in the same time that we're doing the creative strategy so it's actually integrated completely seamlessly um, so we want to make sure if we're going to create a particular ad we want to make sure that my business partner who is the media planner and buyer understands where it is that she wants to put it in and then I create a message that'll work for that particular demographic among especially Hispanic community even across the country, as you all know, it's not monolithic. We can't speak exactly the same way to all of them. It's not only using Spanish and English, but it's also uh, segmenting those messages. So it is true, the earlier the better, and that actually, that's why Nevada was not about luck. It was about pure planning. And it's not just the campaign. This industry has actually, talking about the media changes, Jack, it is the larger IE world that is really taking a big, big bite out of all of, of the campaigns, really. In terms of media dollars, we see vast majority of dollars, at least through our firm, go through the independent expenditure side. So really, Nevada actually worked especially well, not based on luck, but on pure planning because there were two parallel systems working, and they, of course, could not coordinate, but the strategies were very similar, and I think that's why at the end it actually worked very well.